Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My dear respected elders, brothers, sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen nabijina wa habibina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi afdalu salati wa atamu taslim amma ba'd All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector, and curer. May the choicest of his blessings and salutations be upon our beloved master, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. MashaAllah, the blessed month of Ramadan is just upon us. And to welcome this noble and blessed month, we have inaugurated a series otherwise known as heart softeners where we will be touching on a heart softening piece of advice every single night after taraweeh insha'Allah ta'ala the advice is first and foremost for myself and then all of you all may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of goodness for us and may he the almighty accept this from us and may he make this gathering and the gatherings to come a gathering where the angels shroud us with their wings, the sakina, tranquility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon us, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelops us, and may He, the Almighty, make high mention of us in the seven heavens. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, I wish to ask you all a question. If a noble guest were to visit one of us, what, what do you think we would do? Would we ignore that guest? Would we go around with our usual chose and ignore that particular guest, a noble and a blessed guest? Or would we entertain that guest? Would we make time and entertain that guest with the best hospitality available? I'm sure all of us would entertain the guest. This blessed month of Ramadan is indeed a blessed and a noble guest who has come to visit us. So it is upon us to welcome this blessed month of Ramadan and use this month of Ramadan to the maximum and reap as much as good deeds as possible as it is a season where we are supposed to reap our good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Ramadan, what is the purpose behind Ramadan? Why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed fasting for us? Why has Allah the Almighty made us fast in such a way that we are to starve from dusk till dawn? Is it mere starving from dusk till dawn? Nay, there is, there is a much greater objective behind why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed fasting upon us. He himself states in the Noble Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum min qablikum la'allakum taktakoon Oh you who believe, kutiba alaykum usiyam, fasting has been prescribed upon y'all and also the nations before you all, for what reason? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Now comes about the topic for this night's heart softener, so that you all adopt taqwa. Allah Akbar. So that you all become people of taqwa. Taqwa is the ultimate goal behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating us. He says in the Noble Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinn kind or mankind for any other purpose other than worshipping. Other than worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and then even created the nations before you all. 
Once again, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you will become people of taqwa. Allahu Akbar. Taqwa is the ultimate goal behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even creating us. What is taqwa? A taqwa is an Arabic term which stems from the root waqa yaqi wiqaya, which means to put up a barrier. Some people have translated taqwa as the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people have translated it as the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather, it is both of these meanings coupled together and it is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simultaneously being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the amazing part about the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the more you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, opposing fearing other things, in general when you fear other things, you run away from those things. But when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you fear Him, the more you run towards Him. Allahu Akbar. And I would say that most beautiful definition in regard to taqwa is the definition of Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah who says that taqwa is to put up a barrier, to put up a protection, a barrier to protect you from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah the Almighty save us all from His punishment and from His torment. Ameen. Umar radiallahu an, he once went to Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu an, and he asks Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu an, Ya Ubayy radiallahu an, Ya Ubayy, define taqwa for me. Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu an, who asks Umar radiallahu an, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, have you ever walked down a thorny path? He replies in the affirmative, yes I have. So what did you do? Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu asks him, so what did you do when you were walking down that path? Umar radiallahu anhu replies, I gathered my clothes together, I took precaution and moved down that path very carefully. Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu then says, that is exactly what taqwa is. Because the path that we are traversing is this temporary life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. And the thorns are the muharramat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu that are far and wide where the devil uses those stones to snag us and make us stumble. So we are supposed to take much precaution and move away from those stones and traverse down the path. Then that is taqwa resulting in us being successful in this world as well as the hereafter. Let me share with you all a beautiful story. A story that took place many many moons ago. A story that was narrated to us by our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. The story is of three individuals, three men. They were once journeying past a few mountains. They were trekking down a steep mountain hill. And what happened was suddenly a storm overtook them. And they saw this particular cave and they took refuge in that cave. The minute they took refuge in that cave, a boulder, a big rock rolled over and blocked the entrance. There was no way for them to come out of uh, uh, that particular cave. There was no way for them to come out of the particular cave. Now what they did was they were talking amongst themselves and they decided, let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us pray to Him and let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning some of our good deeds. Allahu Akbar. So the first individual, he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I am a shepherd. I am a shepherd and I had this habit each time I go to graze my flock of sheep. Whenever I return home, the first bowl of milk, I go and I offer it to my parents before I offer it to my family and my children. But one night when I came, my parents, they had fallen asleep. Allahu Akbar. They had fallen asleep and due to that, I stood by their bedside until they woke up. And Allahu Akbar, they only woke up in the morning. My children were crying by my feet out of hunger. They were crying by my feet, but I waited because of the love and the respect that I had for my parents. The narration goes along the lines of these words. And only when my parents had had their fill and had after they had satiated their hunger, only then I fed my family. Ya Allah, if I did this for your sake, Please help us and take us, save us from this predicament, this problem that we are in. The rock, the boulder moved a bit, but it wasn't enough for them to move out. 
So the second individual now prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And an important thing to be noted is that this is one of the forms, one of the permissible forms of tawassul, one of the permissible forms of getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by mentioning your good deeds. The second individual, he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I was madly in love with my cousin sister. I had a cousin sister who, was, who I was madly in love with. I tried to approach her many times, but she wasn't interested in me. But then one fine day, poverty hit their family and she comes to me seeking help. I promised to help her. I promised a sum of money under the condition that she involves in a sex sexual relationship with me, Allahu Akbar, to which she agreed because of the dire necessity and poverty she was under. And what happened was after this agreement with his cousin sister, he goes to a private place. Now he is with the woman. He's about to commit something that is haram, zina, adultery, fornication. Scholars go on to say that he was almost on top of the woman when she says, my brother fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The minute she said that, it struck a chord in that individual's heart. He got up and he said, you keep the money that I promised you. He did not commit zina, he moved away. Ya Allah, he prays to Allah now. Ya Allah, if I did this for your sake, Ya Allah, please help us and get us out of this situation, out of this problem. The boulder now moves some more, but not enough for them to come out. The final person he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I had employed laborers who were working under me. There was this one particular laborer who did not come to collect his wages, but he left. And he came after a long time. His wages, that money that I owed him, I had invested it in my farm. And that money resulted in me in multiplying and I, I, I do from those wages, I own multiple sheep, camels, and uh, cows, etc. The laborer comes to me after some time and he says, O slave of Allah, do you remember you owe me my wages? Please pay them to me. He looks at that man, now he prays to Allah. Ya Allah, I told that laborer, look around you, you see all of these sheep, the camels, the cows, all of that belongs to you. That laborer, he looks at him and says, Are you mocking? Are you playing around with me? To which he said, No, I am not mocking. I'm serious. You can take whatever you wish. Allahu Akbar. He prays to Allah, Ya Allah, if I did this sincerely for your sake, Ya Allah, help us out of this problem. To which the boulder completely moved out of the way and they were able to come out. Allahu Akbar. There are so many lessons. Hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. There are so many lessons, so many morals to be derived from the hadith. But as time does not permit, I'll just stick to that which is in relation to taqwa. Look at the final two individuals. He was on the verge of committing zina, on the verge of committing zina, nothing to stop him. He is in the privacy of his room or of his home perhaps. There was no one to stop him, nothing other than the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which struck a chord in his heart, resulting in him moving away from that sin. And likewise, the second man, there was nothing to stop him from just paying off the wages to that individual. But taqwa, fear and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, made him think that I don't even want to consume a penny which is haram. He paid out all that which he owed that man. Allahu Akbar. Look at what taqwa does, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam. Taqwa is something that governs our limbs. The minute we ingrain taqwa in our lives, the minute we infuse our hearts with taqwa, it keeps us away from sins. It makes us abide to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, resulting in us being successful in this world as well as the hereafter as our powerful maker states in the noble Quran <laughs> indeed for the people of taqwa is success is victory Allahu Akbar success in this world as well as the hereafter so let us use this month of Ramadan to ingrain taqwa in our lives to infuse our hearts with taqwa may Allah the Almighty forgive all of our sins and may he accept our good deeds and may he help us to use this month of Ramadan to the maximum and may he help us to make the best of this month of Ramadan as if it is our last month of Ramadan wa 
الدعوة يعني الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير